verse 8. A very popular scripture. Hebrews 13 verse 8. Say, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. In English, when you say something is the same, it means all the qualities that he ever possessed remains. Hallelujah. To say Jesus is the same yesterday or the same, yeah, yesterday, today, and forever means that whatever he was yesterday, he is today. Whatever he has yesterday, he has today. Whatever he could do yesterday, he can do today. If at any point he loses one of these characteristics, he is not the same. Praise the Lord. That's what it means when you said, oh, it's the same you I used to know. What you have indirectly said is you haven't changed. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ, the one you read about, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I said, whatever he could do yesterday, he can do today. Hallelujah. If he was willing yesterday, he must be willing today. Praise the Lord. Okay, for us to be able to appreciate who Jesus is today, it will be important for us to know who he was yesterday. You follow me? Because he said he is the same yesterday, today. Or today, the same today as he was yesterday. So if I'm going to appreciate who he is today, I must know who he was yesterday. Hallelujah. Turn your Bible to the book of Matthew chapter 8, verse 16. When the evening or even was come, like it's evening now. King James said it's even. <laughs> Hallelujah. When the evening was come, they brought unto him, Jesus, many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirit with his word and healed all that were sick. Hallelujah. No, we are looking at Jesus yesterday. When the evening was come, they, the people, brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. Yesterday, he cast out devils with his words. That is how he did, or he dealt with devils yesterday. He cast out the spirit with his word. Hallelujah. And then yesterday he healed how many? All that were sick. None was left out. Meaning, if he is the same today, his words must be able or should be able to cast out devils and he should heal Everyone that is sick, then he is the same. If, if some people are left out, he has changed. He healed all that were sick. Hallelujah. Let's look at Matthew chapter 10, verse 35. I said your volume is low. I'm sure you've seen the message. Don't worry, they'll respond to you. 
Hallelujah. Matthew 10, 35. For I am come to set a man. Now. Excuse me. Not 10. Not just a moment. No, Matthew 15, 29. Matthew 15, 29, yes. And Jesus departed from thence. He departed from thence and came nigh unto the sea of Galilee and went up into a mountain and sat down there. Verse 30. And great multitudes came unto him, having with them those that were lame couldn't walk. A lame man is someone who has the leg grows complete, but it doesn't work. Hallelujah. All those that were lame, blind, dumb, maimed. A maimed man is not a lame man. A lame man has legs, but he cannot walk. A maimed man has the leg Perhaps, for example, removed, he's been cut off, amputated, so he's maimed. You cannot heal a maimed man. You you can only heal what is there. You can't heal what is not there. Praise the Lord. So yesterday, the Bible says, great multitudes came unto Jesus, having with them those that were lame, blind dumb, maimed, and many others. Meaning that if you were not blind, I'm sorry, if you were not lame, if you were not blind, if you were not dumb, if you were not maimed, you are among the many others. They brought them, many others, and cast them down where? At the feet of Jesus. And he healed them. Every one of them. Every one. Hallelujah. He healed them. Verse 31. He healed them in so much that the multitude who brought these people wondered when they saw the dumb speak. The maimed to be whole. The lame to walk and the blind to see and they glorify the God of Israel. He healed them in so much so that the multitude wondered. Not when they were told, when they saw the dumb speak. Meaning, if Jesus is the same today, he should be able to make the dumb to speak. I will make it. So is it making sense to you? The blind, he said, the dumb speak, the maimed to be whole. I said, the maimed don't need healing. It requires a miracle because you are missing a part. And this scripture, I cannot read beyond this, this maimed and still be normal. <laughs> I'm telling you, every time I read to the point of the maimed to be made whole, I have to stop to try to imagine. Hallelujah. The man left home without a leg. He said he was going to Jesus. Think about it. Your brother, your sister, your husband, your wife. Your, you know, left home. You knew that maybe daddy had been in an accident and the leg had been cut off. You knew it. Daddy has no leg. And then daddy said, I heard Jesus is having a crusade. And daddy went, maybe on wheelchair or with crushes. Daddy went to Jesus. And then daddy is coming back home, walking on two legs. Hallelujah. Can you, can, can you think? 
This man has no leg. The man can take you to where his leg was buried. <laughs> Are you following me? He can take you there. But he's coming back from a Jesus' crusade, walking on two legs. And now the Bible is telling me that that Jesus is the same today. <laughs> you are not hearing what I'm hearing. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, 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 you're not hearing what I'm hearing. I remember the story of the late T.L. Osborne. He said, I went to preach in India. He said, Jesus is the son of God and God is good. And that Jesus is the only way to God. He said, the Muslim Indian came and said, how do you know? He said, no, the Bible said so. Then they also brought their Quran. You know, the Quran is like a Bible. They said, they said, hey, sir, look, your Bible is black, black cover. Our Quran is black cover. The Quran said it's Muhammad that is the prophet of God, <laughs> not Jesus. The man said, I could not convince them. Because now you can argue, but you have no proof. You said the Bible is true. They said the Quran is true. Who, who knows which one is true? He said, I came back home. I was beaten. He said, one day he went for a program where William Branham was preaching. He said he was in the balcony up there. And Branham, you know, people were coming for prayers. And then a young lady came to the stage that was deaf. Couldn't hear. Is it William Branham put his hands in her finger? I mean, put his fingers in her ears and said, in the name of Jesus Christ, come out. Hallelujah. Then he says, when he took his hands, the lady could hear perfectly. Tielobo said, when I sat down there, I heard a thousand voices. <laughs> That's what I heard every time I read this, this portion. I heard, or I hear thousands of voices. The maimed to be made whole. The lame to work. And the blind to see. And the people glorify the God of Israel. So if somebody tells you that the man with the ability to do things like this is the same, what should you do? They, they told you that, look, there's a man who can open blind eyes, make the dumb speak, the lame to work, the dumb to, to speak, and the maimed to be made whole. That man is the same today. If somebody tells you, what will you say? I will say, show me, where can I find him? That's what I will say. If you say somebody with such ability walked this world, and that person is the same today. I want to know, how can I meet him? Praise the Lord. Because I will, find, I will have figured out that if I can meet him, my problem will be solved. There was nobody that ever came to Jesus and went back the way they came. Nobody. No matter what you went through or what you are going through, when you meet Jesus, it ends. Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever. I said, if he's the same, the next question is, where can I find him? Maybe you have a problem in your body. Maybe the doctors say there is no cure for this thing. Maybe you've had it for so long. Jesus is the same. We just read, he healed them all. Hallelujah. The Bible declares that there was a man who was born and have no eyes. The man was not blind. There were no eyes. He said, Jesus spat on the ground, 
<laughs> construct an eye or eyes and fix them in those holes and say, go and wash. Hallelujah. The Bible says the man went, ho- went to, the, to the sea of Salom, washed his eyes, and came back seeing. Think about The Bible says he was born like that. So think about it as a parent. You're at home. You know your child is not blind. He doesn't have eyes. And then that child is coming home, no more carrying sticks, or nobody is leading the child. He's walking home. You know, you, you, are, you will be tempted to ask, is this my son or somebody else? Why? Because the son that I know don't have eyes. I've seen miracles. There was a guy that I think was have involved in an accident, something like that. Or he was shot in the eye, something like that. And the, the eyes was damaged. Are you hearing me? So they removed the eye bulbs. And they put artificial eyes. He came for a, a meeting like this. And Jesus performed the miracle and he could see from that eye. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. The fake eye, he still remove it because he need to take it out from time to time to clean it. When he take the fake eye out, he can still see through the holes. That is the God that I serve. The eye have been damaged. You know, I tell people, if you say there is no God, it's just an expression of how shallow you are. It's a declaration of your ignorance. No wonder the Bible says, a fool has said in his heart, there is no God. By what law should such a man ever see? The eyes is damaged. Even the doctors are petrified. They take the eye out, he can still see. I don't mean, no, he can see people perfectly. You know what God did? God was trying, I I believe God is trying to prove to doctors that there is a limit to their knowledge. Hallelujah. Jesus is the same. It means I have no trouble. It means no matter what I am told, I can have a miracle. No matter, even if you say nobody ever had a miracle, or no, not nobody ever got healed from this ailment. If Jesus is the same, I can have a miracle. I told us on, on Thursday or Wednesday that we serve a God that specializes in doing what men said cannot be done. It is you that is thinking that the things you are praying for is too big. It is you that is thinking it. Do you know how big God is? I know, you know, you can bring a prayer point or pray a prayer and still be doubting. Your doubt is an expression of your ignorance of who God is. God is big. You know, I don't like to say God is bigger. I don't like, you know, people sing songs like that, greater greater than the greatest. I cannot say God is greater. Greater than what? I love the song Eben said. He said, you are God all by yourself. You are in the class of your own. There is no comparison. With what? You can't say God is bigger. Bigger than what? He made them all. If you know who God is, you'll never be depressed one more day. You'll never be afraid one more day. Hallelujah. You know, when we pray, listen, we are, it's fasting and prayer, right? Seven days of, when we pray, most of the time, our imagination of God is that of our Father, earthly Father. We, 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 we think God is our earthly Father. <laughs> Hallelujah. First he said, oh, I don't know if you answer my prayer. I don't know if you like me enough. Or if you can do it. Listen. 
I, I like what Kenneth Copeland once said. He said, I'm looking for uh, some money, a couple of million dollars to do something. And he was, you know, every time he's, he's, oh God, you know. One day God told him, he said, I have a million ways to give you this money. And you cannot figure out just one way. <laughs> he said, you can't figure out one way. See, I have a million ways to give you this money. Only God can talk like that. Have you not read? The Bible says he raises the poor from the dust and the beggar from the dunk hill and make him sit together with princes. That's the God that I serve. You may, you may come here today walking. Maybe you came in a taxi. Maybe you trek to church. Do you know this God can give you a car in 24 hours? Elijah spoke. He said, he said to the people, about this time tomorrow, there will be abundance at the gate of Samaria. A man who, you see, I said, if you, if you question God, in your mind you are intelligent, but in the mind of justice you are myopic. You are very ignorant. He said, even if God opened the windows of heaven, do you know what you're talking about? The one who made the world. You know what I'm, I'm sharing with you like this? So that you can start seeing the answer to your prayers. Because he said to Abraham, he said, your wife is going to have a baby. He started laughing. God asked Abraham, he said, is there anything too hard for God? Is there anything Oh God, I need a car. It's not whether or not. The question is, can he give you? The Bible says, I love it. In, in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20, the Bible says, unto him that is able to do. It's not, about, it's not, see, it's not a question of ability. It's, he's able to do. Then I love this. It's exceeding abundantly above all you could ever think or even imagine. Meaning, if you can imagine it, God can do more than this. After the seven days, your life will change and your testimonies are established. Amen. Hallelujah. He is able to do. Not he may be able. You see, he is able. Ability is not the problem. He is able to do exceeding ability. Abundantly. If you can think of how of becoming a millionaire, he can do more than that. I mean, think about it. I just told you a story of a man who has no eyes who can see. <laughs> Some people have two eyes, and it's a problem. But this one doesn't. He don't have an eye. How do you explain it? They've got to be a god somewhere. <laughs> Your life has changed forever. Yes. Hallelujah. This is the way to think when you pray to God. You are talking to someone that has limitless possibilities. That have ability to do even beyond my mind. You say, okay, they cut the leg off. Right? The leg is cut off. The doctor cut it off. The doctor knows that this man's leg has been cut off. But here comes the man walking on two legs. What should the doctor say? It kills everything you study in school. <laughs> Hallelujah. It beggars the mind. You know why? Because he met with God. I told you a story. A lady's womb was removed. Because of too many abortion, the womb was taken out. By the law of biology, she should never have a child again. <laughs> Woo, glory! She got married. First, the brother saw her and wanted to get married. And she said, we cannot get married. The brother said, no, why not? He said, no, we cannot get married. And the brother pressed on her. And she said, okay. You see, even if we get married, we cannot have children. So why? You see, because before I got born again, I lived the wrong life and have so many abortions. And in one of those abortions, my womb was damaged and the doctor had to remove it. 
So I have no womb. We will never be able to have children. The brother said to her, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. He said, and behold, all things have become new. So, they went ahead and got married. She was not supposed to have a baby again. A few months into the wedding, she had a stomach pain. She rebuked it. It would not go. She cast it out. It would not go. She prayed about it. It would not go. Finally, she decided to go to the doctor. <laughs> Hallelujah. Went to the doctor. Doctor looked at her and said, young lady, don't you know you are pregnant? She said, doctor, I cannot be pregnant. Are you hearing me? He said, I, I cannot be pregnant. The doctor became angry. You know, <laughs> you are teaching me my job. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. He became angry. Then he said, doctor, and it happened to be the same doctor who performed the operation. He said, doctor, don't you remember me? <laughs> the doctor, you know, dropped his glass. That is what I cannot understand. You are already wearing glass because you, you cannot see properly. <laughs> but now, you want to see something, you put the glass down. So <laughs> Hallelujah. The doctor dropped his glass down and said, it looks like I remember you. What is that your name again? <laughs> Hallelujah. And they went through the fire and they found the fire. The womb had been removed. The doctor says, oh, no, 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 you cannot be pregnant. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you cannot be pregnant with a tumor. Guess what? She gave birth to a bouncing baby boy. By what law do such things happen? There are a lot of testimonies of people who have given birth without a womb. They say there's just a patch somewhere. A patch without a womb. Your problem is impossible as long as it has not met with God. When he meets with God, something must change. Hallelujah. No wonder Paul said, I know whom I have believed. I'm not guessing this thing. He said, and we know, not we are assuming, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. He said, we know. They may say it's diabetes. They may say it's cancer. Somebody say cancer can be canceled. Hallelujah. Is there anything God cannot do? I tell people, when God wants to move on your behalf, human protocols are suspended. He doesn't go through the minister to the prime minister. No, 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 no. He will wake the president up in his bed and say, my child has a need of this thing. Fix it. And, and I like the way God talks. He says, if you don't do it, I'll kill you. <laughs> it's true. That's the way he talks. The Bible told us, Abraham went to, to Abimelech. And Abimelech took the wife because she was beautiful. Greedy people. Everything that is good, it must belong to them. <laughs> so he took the wife. Abraham actually lied. So he took the wife. The Bible says in the night, God went to Abimelech's room and said, you are a dead man. I tell people, if God said you are dead, which, which doctor will help you? What did he study? Who teach him or who taught him? He said, you are a dead man. So the man said, what did I do? He said, this woman you have, she's the wife of a prophet. Abraham don't need to beg. That will be your story after today. Yeah. You will not need to beg men. Yeah. If they touch you, your God will respond. Yeah. Hallelujah. There are some of you. The people are owing you. And they act like it doesn't matter. After the seven days, they will have no peace until they bring everything they are owing you. 
You are not saying amen like you believe it. Yeah. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Yeah. Where are you in life? Or where have you been in life? The reason for these seven days, we, we call it seven days of power and manifestations. With a team, my life must change and I must testify. The reason why we, we can say something like that is because we know God is real. And when people trust him, he do incredible things. Hallelujah. Somebody called him impossibility specialist. That's the God that I serve. Hallelujah. You are listening to me now. Either here and on all line. All you have known about your life is nothing compared to what God is going to do in your life in the next three months. Hallelujah. Nothing compared. You are not small. Listen. Never, listen, never look down on anybody that know God. Never. They may be here today and there tomorrow. Never, never look down. Do you know, you know, some people are looking for connections, you know. If I can just be connected to this person or that person. Brothers and sisters, if you are born again, if you know the Holy Ghost, you are the most connected person in the world. Are you hearing me? You are connected to the one that has no limitations. If they say, this is how far a human being can go, he can go beyond it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We're going to pray tonight. It doesn't matter whether it's sickness. It doesn't matter what, what it is. I just want you to see God in this new light. I'm not talking to a man. I'm not talking to it's someone who lacks ability. He is able to do. The Bible says the pillars of this world. Eh? He, he holds the pillars of this world. 